there and welcome to this special edition of In The Labs With Me, Becky, and I'm going to show you how to create this super cute children's toolbox that I think would make a perfect gift for any child this Christmas. So the project itself, fairly simple, consists predominantly of 2D machining, where we create this slot together assembly, which is the box. We have various tools that go into the box. So we've got a saw, we've got a spanner or a wrench, We've got a hammer, we've got a ruler, we've got interactive parts so the bolts can come out and slot into the sides of the box. You can use the hammer to bang those into place and I think this is pretty cool. It's going to really kind of hopefully drive the child's imagination that they're in the workshop making their own projects. So I think it's time now that we take a look in the software at the design, look at some of the key features to do with this project, and then we'll take a look at the build and how we come to this finished toolbox. So I use VCarve to draw up all of the parts for the toolbox. So let's just take a look at what we've got here. So we're working with three different sheets. So I'm cutting some parts out of a pine material that is 0.37 of an inch thick. We've got another piece of material that's going to be a little bit thicker to cater for our two-sided 3D hammer, which we can see over here. And then we've got another piece of material that's going to enable us to machine thick bolts that we've got here. So beauty with sheets is we can see everything all in one design and we can have varying thicknesses for different parts of a complete project. Okay, so let's just talk about all of the different parts. So in terms of the toolbox, so we have this, this is the base. This base is going to slot into a track on either side of these side panels. And these side panels are going to slot in to the slots that we've got on the end panels. And then we'll complete the box using these circles that represents the circumference of the dowling that we plan to use. And that's going to be our handle. We've got various tools in here, so we've got a saw, we've got a ruler, we've got a wrench or a spanner, and I've got extra vectors for handles that represent uh, the handles on the saw, so we can create more of a 3D uh, handle, just giving it a little bit of a thicker handle there for the actual saw itself, but you don't need to do that, you can just cut this out as a standalone piece if you wanted to. We've got a hammer over here and we've got some bolts and we'll come to those shortly. Okay, so when you, so in terms of how I drew everything up, so I used all of the drawing tools that I could use to create all of the different parts. So for example, for the circles, I used the draw circle tool. For rectangles, I used the draw rectangle tool. For areas that have got text in there, I use the draw text tool. And then for pretty much everything else, which is kind of like the spanner, the wrench, the saw, the handles, I used the polyline tool to draw up those shapes. Now, when you're having a go at machining this for yourself, the only things you really need to worry about are the vectors that are currently in red, as this project will only work at the moment for material that is currently 0.37. And I know that everyone has different thicknesses lying around, so the probability of you having that exact same thickness is probably very small. So what you need to do is just alter the thicknesses of various parts according to your material thickness. So for example, if your material thickness was a quarter of an inch, you need to change the width of these vertical slots to a quarter of an inch. And you need to alter the height of these horizontal slots to a quarter of an inch as well. Whatever the circumferences of your dowling, you also need to alter the circles to match that as well. So as an example, we can take both of those vectors by holding shift to select them into the set size tool. And then if we go ahead and use this option here to scale items individually, so that we're scaling them, scaling them on an individual basis, you can use this option here to link XY. Let's say your dowling was three quarters of an inch. You can pop that in there, ensuring that we're scaling from the center and then apply and you'll see it all make those changes there. Okay, I'm just going to undo that by pressing Control Z as I want mine at 0.6. So in terms of your slots, so if we just zoom in on some of those, okay, so you can see we've got fillets in here. Why are the fillets in these, in these slots? So when we're cutting slots out, we want to get in at the internal corners of our slots. Now a round tool can't actually cut out those corners. So we need to create these dog bone fillets to ensure that we get in at those corners. 
So using the fillet tool is how we then create those fillets. You specify the radius of the tool you're going to use and then you can just add them in. So if I just defillet this for now, so if I just click in there, like so, you can see that will defillet that. If we close out and then if we click on that and take a look over here, you'll notice the width of this slot is 0.37 which bingo matches my material thickness. So if you wanted to change uh, your slots, you need to defillet those slots first and then come in and alter the size where you alter the width there. And again, do that ensuring that you're scaling that from the center. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the fillets back in. So with that, let's go into the fillet tool, put your radius of the tool, use the dog bone fillet option, and then you just simply click in to those corners and we've got those fillets in place okay so that's pretty much it that's all you'll need to change so the height for these ones the width for these ones according to your material thickness so that's pretty much that sheet so let's go over to the hammer okay so this is our hammer sheet so just double click on that to activate the sheet I'm just going to toll the window so we can take a look at what we've got there Okay, so in the modeling tab, you can see how we've got this set up. So it's set up the standard way that we set up our two-sided project. So I'll give you a link to a two-sided video to take a look at that goes into a lot more detail of how to go about a two-sided project and how to set up your alignment when machining uh, so that you can understand that. So we're not gonna go into that today. Right then, so we've got components that create the hammer and we've got the bottom of the hammer. Basically everything is just copied to the other side so we can switch to the other side by using this button here. Okay, so let's go on to the next sheet. So we've got bolts to machine. If we just double click on that, we can activate that sheet. So here we just have a series of bolts. So these circles actually match up to the circles that we've got in our side panels um, and that will enable us to create those bolts. Right, and so in terms of machining, let's switch over to the toolpaths tab. So here, let's take a look at what we've got here. So we're actually pocketing between the circles and the outer vectors. So if we go ahead and preview the first toolpath, so just preview that. Okay, so that's what that looks like. So we're creating the actual stem there. And then we've got a cutout, so we could go ahead and preview that. That's going to cut everything out. We've got tabs in there to keep that in place. We're going to machine that first and that way we can test the fit of these bolts in the actual holes of the next sheet. So switching over, so once we've cut that out, we can then go over to our pine sheet where we're going to cut out the majority of the toolbox parts. So here you can see we've got more toolpaths in our list this time. Okay, so we'll just go through each of those. So we've got a profile toolpath where we're using a V-bit tool to create the ruler markings, which you can see there. We've got a V-carve toolpath to create the text and the numbers which looks good there. Then we've got uh, some pockets. So we've got pockets for the holes. Now, if we double click to go into that toolpath, you'll notice I've got an allowance here. So we're basically overcutting this ever so slightly by an amount that always is has worked in the past in slot together projects that I've worked on. It makes it so that the cutout isn't too tight, neither is it too loose. So this should give us that magic number. So we're gonna overcut by that amount. And then if we go ahead and preview that, that's what that will look like and then at this point we can take our bolts and we can just test them in those holes we can also test the holes for our dowling as well so it's good to do test cuts here uh, just to ensure everything fits okay so pockets for the slots so these I've got a smaller allowance so it's just going to be a little bit tighter though which is exactly what we want for the panels so if we go ahead and preview that and um, we'll preview the bottom, so pretty much the same there. We've got a pocket for the handle, so we're just cutting down a quarter of an inch. And then we're going to do a cutout of all of the parts, and that's what that will look like. And so these handles will then be glued on either side of the actual saw itself. Brilliant, so that's sheet two done. So then we can move on over to our hammer. So if we double click on the hammer here, We'll just take a look at what we're going to do here. So if we just pop that in C. Uh, and first off, we've got a pocket for our dowel. So this is to ensure that we can create correct alignment when we come to flip the material over. And again, if you've not done two-sided machining before, I'll link you to a brilliant video that talks through this whole process in a lot more detail. 
Okay, so then we've got the 3D roughen toolpath that's going to hog out the majority of the material uh, so that we can go in afterwards with a smaller tool to create the finish. Awesome, and then we can go on to the 3D finish which is with our tapered ball nose bit. Awesome, so that's what the top side will look like, it looks pretty good. So at this stage what we do is we then take that material off and you'll see that shortly when we come over into the labs. Uh, but in terms of what we're going to do with our tool pass, we need to switch to the bottom side. And the first operation that we're going to do is we're going to pocket the dowels. So everything, the vectors and the models have been copied over to the other side and we're going to take the vectors for the dowels and we're actually going to machine them straight into our spoil board so we'll cut into the spoil board and then we can flip our material over and it align them up with the dowels and then everything will be aligned in terms of the x and y positions and you can't go wrong because we've just randomly placed those dowels so then we'll go through the roughing and the 3d finish again just like we did on the top side And that's looking amazing. And that's what I love about the toolpath previews. We're able to see and visualize what our parts will look like before we go ahead and machine them. So on that note, let's head over to the labs to machine all of these parts.
So I hope you enjoyed seeing how this toolbox was made and I hope it inspires you to share some kindness this Christmas and make a toolbox for a child near you. So thank you for watching and happy making.